Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Ken Tsai and today we'll be looking at Mongol architecture. For some brief context, the Mongol Empire was created by Genghis Khan after years of fighting amongst the tribes of Mongolia. Genghis and his allies conquered and united most of the tribes and created the identity of the Mongols. Genghis then went on to expand into the Middle East and China, unfortunately dying before the Song dynasty could be conquered. His sons, in accordance with his will, split up the empire, each of them getting a piece. Over time, each section became more and more embroiled in interior issues, and overall there was just a general disconnect of the family. The disconnect eventually led to the general downfall of, downfall of the Mongol Empire, and it just fragmented. With that information, we move on to the beginning of the timeline, looking at the architecture used and created under Genghis, as he is known in other sources, Chinggis Khan. Architecture under the progenitor of Mongol culture exist, consisted of yurts and the differing architecture of the postal stations. The stereotypical yurt, as seen, is an octagonal structure, its walls and roof consisting of heavy felt or wool cloth with a rectangular flap used for a door. In the secret history, one of the main sources for the Mongols, after the battle with the Ankh Khan, Genghis captures the Khan's golden tent and gives it as a prize to two of his companions. The golden tent was one of the earlier mentions of Mongol tents being made of or adorned with precious metals. The only other architecture created under Genghis was the Mongol postal system or yam. It was one of the linchpins in the Mongol war machine and it seems that not much is actually known as to what these stations look like. The sources that discuss them mostly talk about what each station did, though there are some assumptions as to what they look like, as seen here. From Genghis, his sons then moved on and took over the different parts of the empire. His eldest son, Joshi, had already died at this point, and his land, what's most commonly known as the Golden Horde, was split up among his sons, Genghis' grandkids. The biggest architectural change came from Genghis' son, Ogedai. Ogedai was his successor, and he built the first Mongol capital at Karakorum. He implemented Chinese architects to help him, thus giving the Mongol architecture of Karakorum and to the Eastern Khanates a more Chinese look to it. The other sons kept, more, kept the more nomadic lifestyle the more traditionalist area being the Chagatee Khanate. His Khanate less was an influencer and more influenced. According to an article by Uluku Ubatis, I could be pronouncing that wrong, I, pre I apologize for my pronunciation, the style of the mausoleums in the area of Antilla, where after the Mongol invasion they went from being octagonal to round or square, could be an indicator of the architecture seen in Mongol Europe thus influencing the mausoleums. Though uh, there are other factors as uh, the square shape could be attributed to uh, the Chinese influence or influences from outside the Mongols. The Chagatee Khanate does not have much information on it due to its nomadic nature. Most of the info we have is by proxy from the Il Khanate or the other Khanates of the Golden Horde and the Eastern Khanate. There seemed to bring a culture and architectural split between East and West. The Eastern Mongol Empire preferred the Chinese style, while the West followed the Islamic stylings of architecture. Though the capital of the Golden Horde, oh, the capital of the Golden Horde, sorry about two, seems to reflect a more Middle Eastern example of architecture, as seen here. Uh, the displaying Islamic style buildings as shown in the reconstruction of the capital found in Russia. Though the recreation is not entirely correct, it seems to have taken a, the more western stylings of the empire. To continue with the grandkids, one of the better known great Khans would have been Monke. His Karakoram was essentially the same as Ogigai's. The architecture, the architecture did not change, and the wealth and display, according to William of Rubric, was not that good. Though it is William of Rubric, and this account must be taken with a grain of salt. The more interesting people for this time, architecturally speaking, will be his brothers, Kublai and Kuluhu. 
Moncte and Hulahu expanded into the Middle East, reclaiming lands lost to, to government reforming, governments reforming, and political strife among the Mongols. After the invasion, Moncte gave these lands to Hulahu, and he became the first Ilkhan. Like the Chagatid Khanate in the the Ilkhanate were more influenced than influencers, adapting Muslim architecture and adding Mongol designs and adornments to them. The other brother, Kublai, was in charge of a large section of the Chinese Mongol Empire, and after Monke's early death and the subsequent battle for power, he became Khan and abandoned Karakoram, taking whatever he could with him to the, build a new capital in China at Dadu. Dadu is mo in modern term, Dadu in modern terms is Beijing. And in order to build his new capital, Kublai demolished the old city and completely rebuilt it from the ground up. Using primarily Chinese designs, he created an, a planned city with wide lanes and sectioned off areas for different populations and industries. The transition from nomadic to sedentary for the Mongols led to them adapting local styles of architecture while keeping some of their artistic and cultural practices alive. Unlike some common preconceptions, the Mongols did, in fact, have full palaces, and not all of them continued to live in garrets. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. My sources can be found in the links below, and I hope you have a great day.